start to the future. I mean, our our business, we're a startup business. Um, we're highly distributed. Um, His microphone's distributed. That's too. right, my microphone's distributed. <laughs> um, and we're highly distributed, and, and we have no headquarters. We have no office. Uh, we are roughly based in Soma in San Francisco. Um, and we work out of, I mean, Liquid Space has several hundred co-working uh, venues within its, uh, in its ecosystem. But we work out of those co-working venues, out of business centers, we work out of public libraries, work out of some of the corporate offices that are in the system. And what's interesting, when you have a completely distributed workforce, and you don't own any real estate, um, you still need the chance to go bring your team together collaboratively. We do that spontaneously. Whenever we're in town together, we, we say, find me, join me at this or that particular co-working center. But the other thing that we do is, is at least once every 45 days, we do what's called a pop-up headquarters. So what we do is we take one of those centers and we declare that center is going to be our headquarters. And because, for the day? For, for the week. For the week. For the week. And, be, and because, we, uh, because we save all this money on real estate, I'm instead able to go ahead and pay for everyone's plane tickets, and I fly everybody into town, and we say, for that week, pretend you're like old school, and you have to get in the car or walk down the street and commute to work, and we're all going to go ahead and be working together. And what we find universally is that we don't get nearly as much done. Because, <laughs> well, why? Too why? Because there's too many distractions. But, but what happens is you get all those amazing serendipitous opportunities and conversations that wouldn't have otherwise occurred mm -hmm. do occur during that, during that week. And then at the end of the week, we go ahead and we disperse like we normally do. We all get a lot of stuff done that we didn't normally get done you know, during that one week. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's in this era of unbuilding, which is the opportunity that's in front of us now, it's the, it's, it's the requirement in order to go through and create a sustainable future, that companies are going to have the opportunity to go ahead and invert that natural model that exists and that we, we've, been, we've constructed in the 20th century into a model where, where, where everybody is completely distributed. There's no reason to have to go to a headquarters. And you instead declare periodically, now's the time to come together. And that place you can come together doesn't have to be a place you own, because there's tons of places out there. Uh, Marriott Hotels will be here later this afternoon. We work with them, and they're, they're turning on thousands of workspaces around venues around the United States and around the rest of the world. Okay. Cindy, I'll jump on this one yeah. as well. I, I had the experience of doing a startup from scratch. And as, as uh, Doug just said, it, it's all about scrambling, grabbing whatever resources, whatever places uh, uh, you can to try to keep the thing going. And you get very inventive. You pull people in, whether they're employees or consultants or volunteers. And it, it turns out that that, I think, is a remarkably good model even for much bigger companies. I mean, we're a company of almost 200,000 consultants and, and service providers. And yet the model of, of finding people finding places, finding resources, finding tools to suit the, the, the challenge of the moment is still a remarkably effective way of working. And there's not such a big gap there between my experience in starting up uh, my own company and what I see now increasingly is what we define as part of the future of work of that same kind of model of saying, hey, grab what you have to, do it where you have to, come together where you have to, but We'll give you the choice of getting of how you get it done. Okay. Anybody else want to comment on that one? Yeah, I just think that it'll be, you know, end of the day, it's the results, what comes out of it. And as, as companies struggle for this, it's how do you do this? And then I think that, you know, as we, we will then be at the point, five years from now, your millennials will be 20 to, to 40 years old. So that will be the bulk of your workforce. I have, you know, children in that age range and the next generation behind it that the way they work is, is truly different. I, I see it every day. And that, you know, we as an organization, I know that social, um, social aspects are very, very important to them. You know, what is that service level that they provided? So, you know, we have teams now going out to other countries, just as other, many other organizations do, and, and being embedded in those cultures. And, and the learnings that come back from those experiences. Um, and, and it may be that, you know, um, as I once had, I um, graduated um, in uh, the arts, and I once went to a class, and the teacher said, you need to sit next to the person who's never taken a drawing class, because you're going to learn from them, just like they're going to learn from you. And it's those kinds of experiences of, you know, the big organizations need to learn from the small organizations. We need to learn from the, the, the farmer in New Guinea. We need to, those 
across experiences are what will make these organizations get to the results um, and, and you know, create the communities that are that much stronger. Okay. Cindy, I was just going to make one more quick comment. Um, but what's already been said, I mean, the key is small businesses like Liquid Space are, it, co-working is not foreign to them. It's becoming the norm. And so where does it go from there? Well, if you have small businesses that Google at one time was a small business, you know, Facebook started like a small business, Microsoft, small business. Um, had co-working been around back then, they probably would have tapped into it more uh, like they're doing now. And I think that for all of us to think about is as these companies grow, we talk about integrated portfolios with third spaces and things like that. It's not a lot of the largest companies that we work with, they struggle with that concept because it's new to those senior leaders. Well, if the folks that started the company started out that way, it's no longer new. It's a part of their DNA, it's how they work, and that's where really I see this uh, really at a fundamental point now where it's just gonna grow from here as the next startup that became the next Twitter, the next Google, Facebook, whatever, is gonna take this and have it as part of their portfolio as a norm of the way they do business. Since somebody has to take the other side of this. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping. I'll, I'll be that guy. Um, if I had to make a prediction, I, personally, I think, this, I think we're going to see this go the other way. Um, I think you're going to start to see the workplace start to draw more and more people in. And I think you're going to get back to, uh, I'll use this example. Um, how long have online universities been around? I mean, University of Phoenix and other ones like that. But I, I can't think of one, and maybe there is, and no disrespect if anybody has graduated from the, the greatest online university, but I don't see Oxford, Harvard, Yale going to online universities. And for everyone here who has been to college, I think we can all agree that the most of the learnings that you picked up had nothing to do with the class. It had to do with all that time that you spent surrounded by like-minded people who were hungry for knowledge, who were experimenting with the same kinds of things that you were experimenting with, and you, you fed off of each other's energy, and it, there's this, this bit of one-upsmanship that you just can't get by watching a lecture on, on a screen and then doing the work yourself, or, or you know, getting together with two people in, in, a, in a void of the rest of the folks that are in your class. This element of drawing people into the workplace, having them together, having these, uh, these collisions that, that take place where you have these conversations that you would have never even thought about, you have a conversation at lunch with somebody who you've never met before, who's working on a project that somehow has some distant relation to you and sparks an idea for you. Those kinds of things can't happen when you're too distributed. Um, now I'm not saying that it, you know, we're gonna start going to these mega malls of corporate headquarters uh, again, but I think you're gonna see corporations finding ways to get um, critical mass of people together in locations so that they can work together and feed off of each other's energy. And I think that the designs of those spaces the infrastructure of those spaces is going to continue to elevate itself so that it is better than where you live. So that you get up in the morning and think, well, I could, I could stay here, or I could go into the office, which is much nicer than my living room, it's much nicer than the office that I have in my house. And not only that, but it's also filled with people who I enjoy being with. And I'm gonna go there because that's really where I get my motivation, that's where the mojo happens. It, it doesn't happen in my living room or the, um, a bunch of people who I may or may not even be able to talk to about what I'm working on because it's, you know, it's top secret, it's confidential, whatever it might be. So. so to Adam's point, I actually wanted to bring up Google because every single client I work with says, well, we toured Google, and here's what Google <laughs> said, and they all compare themselves to Google, right? Um, a point was brought up this morning that everybody universally is looking to reduce real estate costs. The thing to me that distinguishes Google from other um, companies is that their real estate people at budget time ask, are we spending enough? And as a very comical insight into what they spend money on. So I went on this four hour tour of Google um, uh, at uh, Mountain View with a teammate of my, a former teammate of mine from Cisco. So he gave me this great sort of back of the house tour. And at the end of it, um, I was waiting for Kate North to pick me up. Where's Kate? Um, I said, you know what, I'm just going to jump into the restroom. And there I discovered the secret to Google's success. <laughs> Do you know what it is? They have heated toilet seats <laughs> in every stall. But it's one example. 
of the fact that they look for ways to provide an experience to employees that may cost a little more. So to Adam's point, that they want it to be nicer than the home you live in to draw you in there. That, that's an interesting um, point that you bring up there. I'm sorry, but that to segue into another huge component of that. We have heated toilet seats in every stall in Northern California. <laughs> right? Because when you ask folks from Northern California what really will make their day better, it's heated toilet seats. I've asked New Yorkers if they want heated toilet seats. I'm not able to share the response that I received. <laughs> but it's really about finding out what the local community wants. What is important to a Mountain View, Silicon Valley employee is not the same thing that is important to a Manhattan employee. Right. Good point. Okay, so on that note, we will open it up to questions from the audience. And you can direct your question to one person or you can direct your, person to the, uh, your question to the whole panel. Who wants to go first? Yeah, right in front. You were talking about the Mountain View Silicon Valley. Thank you. You sort of skirted around. Um, something that I keep hearing about how technology actually might drive people more together. Searching actually the, the, the social aspects of their jobs again, the human face-to-face -face interaction. Not just that you know the office might have heated toilet seats or that you know there are like-minded people, but that we just need in the face of you know the, the capability of just staring at a screen all day alone in your pajamas in a room. Um, other people? I, I absolutely agree. I was, I was talking to a woman the other day at a, at a conference that I spoke at, and she came up to me afterwards and she said, you're so absolutely right. I worked from home for a year, and days I would wake up and have to truly motivate myself to brush my hair. She's like, I got sick of it. She goes, I didn't like being that person. I wanted to get up and, and talk and see people. And I, I even think the technology piece, and I don't know about you guys, but the bandwidth is faster at my office than it is at my house. Um, I'd rather go to work and get you know, faster connectivity um, and, and see people. So do you think we'll see, I mean, one way to get the benefits of everything we've been talking about is for companies to build sort of company towns, if you will, which is an, an, an old concept from um, factory times. Do you think we'll see more of that where a larger organization that wants to build that community but doesn't want people wasting time commuting will actually provide housing to their employees and schools for their um, children? What, one of the real trends is walkability, Cindy. We're seeing it in Brooklyn here in New York. And the ability to live and work and walk to everything in your universe is, I think, another trend along with co-working. I think the distributed workplace doesn't mean you don't go into an office, but you have multiple modalities of working. And walkability and adjacency. In Sao Paulo, I had a dinner with Philip prior to the conference. It can take six to eight hours to cross the city of Sao Paulo, which doesn't have a great subway system. In Moscow, it can take eight to ten hours. In Bangalore, it can take seven hours to go about five miles. I mean, in terms of mobility, mobility may be the new challenge of the corporate workplace. And walkability and adjacency and new mobility strategies may be more important than workplace strategy. I, I want to kind of pick up on a comment you made about technology and how it applies both you know, on the corporate campus as well. Because you, even though you may, when, you, when you're in an environment as large as Google's, um, and I, I have friends who work there as well, when you, when you get on to, into that environment, how do you find where other people are that you might want to associate with in that environment. I think there's an opportunity there for technology to help go through and take that, the, the social networks that exist in the virtual space and the way we're able to go ahead and connect people now in the virtual community and be able to apply that into the physical community to help 